Sachs joining us now, former assistant U.S. attorney Andrew McCarthy, along with former FBI special agent John Yannarelli. You know, Andrew, it's great to have you both on, first of all, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. First Thank to you, you, Andrew. The question is why? Why did he do the search warrant? And I don't think we're going to know that for a while, Liz, no matter what they put out. Uh, my own view is that this is related to January 6th, and the fact that they had a basis to seek a search warrant on uh, classified documents gave them a legitimate reason to get a warrant, at least under the law, whether it's like whether it was a smart thing to do or a you know politically wise thing to do is a, another matter. But I really think what they're I don't think you can separate this out from everything else that's happened the last six weeks which include three search warrants, uh, both before and after the Mar-a-Lago search, that are related to January 6th. And last week, two grand jury subpoenas that were issued to members of uh, the Trump White House Counsel's Office. It's clear that they're trying to ratchet up uh, activity and make a case on January 6th, and I, gave, I think this gave them the ability to do it, and that explains the timing. Well, yeah, Democrat Zoe mm -hmm. Lofgren telling Z CNN this could overlap. What happened in, uh, in Mar-a-Lago could overlap <laughs> with the January 6th probe. But, John, no one has yeah. earned our trust. No one has earned the viewers' trust here. Not Biden, not Obama, not the FBI, not the DOJ. Even the DOJ inspector general found major problems with the FBI acting wrongfully in Trump Russia. We need to just stick to the facts. A.G. Garland says Trump deserves, quote, the presumption of innocence. How is it a presumption of innocence showing up with 30 FBI agents with machine guns to raid his home? Well, Liz, first of all, let's be very clear. The FBI does not do anything unilaterally. There has to be a government attorney that approves everything that's taking place. And rest assured, that's coming directly from the A.G.'s office. Likewise, when the agents go out and do searches, regardless of how we feel about it, there are protocols they have to follow. It's a big property, a lot of place to be searched. You need a number of agents, including keeping the place secure and working with Secret Service to make sure nobody wanders into that search scene. Agents can't deviate from that. They have to follow that, whether they're searching the right. president's property or somebody else's house. Well, Eric Trump says they deviated from that and went into unauthorized areas. Um, you know, to what John is saying, um, you know, Andrew, A.G. Garland says it's about applying the rule of law evenly. Where's the search on Hillary's home? Well, no, obviously they haven't applied it. Uh, they haven't applied it even-handedly. And what has people in the country really angry is the two-tiered system of justice we have. And, you know, look, they can't look people in the eye and say this has been even-handed. Um, Garland said today that, that on his watch it has been, but you know clearly, for example, the the people who carried out the Capitol riot. I don't have a brief for those people, but they were treated very differently. They were treated much more harshly than people who engaged in rioting following the the uh, George Floyd incident in the weeks and months that went on after that. So the idea that there's been even-handed justice here is a joke, um, but. Uh, we're not going to know the answers to this. You know, they're going to put the warrant out. Um, I, I guess it was a good move on Garland's part to sort of throw the ball in Trump's court because at any time over the last day or however long it's been, I guess since Monday, uh, President Trump could have published this warrant. He could have made it public. So I guess the fact that he hasn't done that indicated to Garland. And uh, you know, the Justice Department would look good. Don't we need like the affidavit? pushing to do it when, when Trump isn't. Don't we need the affidavit too? Of course we need it. But, uh, you know, the way the criminal justice system works, and this is much better, at least, than the FISA situation where, you know, they go to a secret court and there's no defense and we never find out about it because it's all classified. Yeah. In the criminal justice system, we hope that we get honorable performance from the prosecutors and the agents. But what keeps people honest is the process and the fact that you know people are going to be checking your work. So eventually... Okay. Everything's going to be revealed. Defense lawyers are going to go over it. And if they committed you know, misconduct, you, we're going to find out about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that's what the issue is going to be, right, John? I mean, Newsweek, they got it wrong. They said Christopher Ray Green lighted it. It was er uh, Merrick Garland. Uh, they're quoting a 30-year veteran of the FBI who called the raid, quote, a spectacular backfire, that they waited for the president to be out of town, the former President Trump to be out of town, in order to avoid immediate circus. Okay, that's astounding. 
This is already unprecedented and historic. There's nothing routine about this. If this is true that they said that, then they are so remarkably out of touch, maybe they shouldn't be in their jobs. Yeah, I've never seen a situation where I would wait until the person's out of town. If anything, you want that person to be in town because you never know what they're going to say while you're conducting the search. It gives you another opportunity to gather information. Regardless, this could be the most reliable search warrant the FBI's ever written. The implications and the way it appears politically. And I'm not saying the search warrant is good. It may be something that there has been information provided to the FBI that turns out that it's incorrect. But the politics, the way it appears, the way it politicizes the FBI, it's hurting the rank and file agents who do great jobs, preventing them from continuing to do their jobs because this perception the FBI is political. Yeah, that's an important point. You know, uh, Andrew, reports that Trump's team says it was already cooperating with a grand jury subpoena. So why, so why do a raid with a battalion of 30 agents with machine guns over a records violation? Because it's not over a records violation. You know, first of all, the Presidential Records Act is not a criminal statute. You can't get a search warrant for something that's not a crime. So the only crime, evidently, that's pled in the, in the search warrant involves classified information, which isn't just like ordinary government records. But as I said before, I don't think this is what that's about. I don't think you can separate this out from the way they've ratcheted up the January 6th investigation the last six weeks. It can't be that like this had nothing to do with January 6th. And then just a day after, on a street in Pennsylvania, they go up to a member of Congress and give him a search warrant uh, and take his cell phone away. And that's clearly part of the January 6th investigation. You. Trump is the eye of the storm as far as that's concerned for the Justice Department. So it can't be that this has nothing to do with January 6th and everything else does. John, what do you think? Final word. Final word is the fact that this is all being politicized, as I said. The FBI is being put in this in untenable position. Director Ray should be pushing back to the DOJ and saying, look, agents should not be doing something so unprecedented. There are mechanisms for this. Let the attorneys argue it out and try to get whatever they're seeking that way. Unfortunately, that wasn't done. Andrew McCarthy, John Yannarelli, thanks for joining us.